The universe is a truly fascinating and awe-inspiring place with its seemingly endless expanse of stars, galaxies, and other celestial bodies. It's easy to feel small and insignificant, however, despite its vastness, the universe has always captivated the imagination of humanity. From the earliest stargazers to the most advanced scientists of today, we have always been drawn to explore the mysteries of the cosmos. Where's the edge of the observable universe, and what's beyond? What lies outside the boundary of the universe? Join us as we embark on a journey into the abyss of this universe, where darkness itself fears to exist. The Big Bang Theory tells us that, at some point in the distant past, the universe was hotter, denser, and expanding much more rapidly than it is today. The stars and galaxies we see throughout the universe only exist as they do because the universe has expanded and cooled, allowing gravitation to pull matter into clumps over billions of years. Gravitational growth has fueled generations of stars and the formation of galaxies, leading to the universe we see today. Everywhere we look, in all directions, we see a universe that tells us the same cosmic story. However, the farther we look, the farther back in time we are observing. The universe had a beginning, according to the Big Bang, and the observations supporting it. In the early stages after the Big Bang, the universe was filled with a variety of ingredients, and it began with an incredibly rapid initial expansion rate. The expansion rate began large, but has been decreasing as the universe expands. As the universe expands, its volume increases, leading to a decrease in energy density and, consequently, a drop in the expansion rate. Light that was once too far away from us to be seen can now catch up to us, revealing galaxies and objects that were once beyond our reach. While it may have been 13.8 billion years since the Big Bang occurred, with the expansion of the universe, there are objects as far away as 46.1 billion light years whose light is just reaching us. The observable universe contains a staggering 2 trillion galaxies within its vast volume. As enormous as this number is, it's still finite, and our observations don't reveal an edge in space in any direction. The amount of time that has passed since the Big Bang, the speed of light, and the ingredients in our universe determine the limit of what's observable. Beyond that limit, even something moving at the speed of light since the moment of the hot Big Bang will not have had sufficient time to reach us. But all of this will change with time. As the years and eons tick by, light that was unable to reach us will finally catch up to our eyes, revealing more of the universe than we've ever seen before. Today, we observe the universe as it exists, 13.8 billion years after the hot Big Bang. Most galaxies we see are clumped together in galactic groups and rich clusters, separated by vast regions of mostly empty space known as cosmic voids. As we look farther and farther away, we start to see how the universe grew to become what it is today. Galaxies at earlier times are smaller, lower in mass, closer together, and richer in gas with higher rates of star formation. Modern galaxies were created by smaller galaxies merging together over cosmic timescales, building themselves up to become the massive structures we see around us. The universe at earlier times consists of galaxies that are physically smaller, lower in mass, closer together, larger in number, bluer in color, richer in gas, with higher rates of star formation, and with fewer proportions of heavier elements compared to today's galaxies. As we go farther back in time, this gradually changing picture transforms abruptly. At a distance of 19 billion light years, corresponding to when only 3 billion years had passed since the hot Big Bang, the universe's star formation reached its maximum, about 20 to 30 times the rate at which new stars are formed today. Supermassive black holes were active, emitting enormous amounts of particles and radiation due to the consumption of surrounding matter. For the past 11 billion years, the universe's evolution has been slowing down. Gravitation continues to collapse structures, but dark energy begins to work against it, dominating the universe's expansion more than 6 billion years ago. New stars continue to form, but the peak of star formation is in our distant past and supermassive black holes continue to grow, albeit not as brightly as during the early stages. As we go to greater distances, closer to the edge defined by the start of the hot Big Bang, more significant changes become evident. Looking back to a distance of 19 billion light-years, 
corresponding to a time when the universe was just 3 billion years old, star formation was at its peak. The universe was maybe 0.3% to 1.5% heavy elements. Closing in on 27 billion light years away, the universe was only 1 billion years old, and star formation was much smaller, with new stars forming at rates approximately a quarter of what they'll be later on at their peak. The percentage of normal matter made of heavy elements plummets precipitously to 0.1% at an age of 1 billion years, and just 0.01% at an age of around 500 million years. Rocky planets in these early environments may well have been impossible. The cosmic microwave background was significantly hotter, and every galaxy in the universe should be young and full of young stars. Going back even farther, we expect additional edges of interest. At 44 billion light years away, the radiation from the Big Bang becomes visible, glowing red, similar to a red hot surface. This corresponds to a time just 3 million years after the Big Bang. At 45.4 billion light years away, we come to a time just 380,000 years after the Big Bang when it becomes too hot to stably maintain neutral atoms. This is where the leftover glow from the Big Bang, the cosmic microwave background, originates. Beyond that, at 46 billion light years away, we reach the earliest stages of all, the ultra energetic state of the hot Big Bang. This is where the first atomic nuclei, protons, and neutrons, and even the first stable forms of matter, were created. Everything can only be described as cosmic primordial soup, where every particle and antiparticle in existence can be created from pure energy. However, what lies beyond the frontier of this high energy soup remains a mystery. We have no direct evidence for what occurred in those earliest stages, although many predictions of cosmic inflation have been indirectly confirmed. The edge of the universe, as it appears to us, is unique to our perspective. We can see back 13.8 billion years in time in all directions, a situation depending on the spacetime location of the observer who's looking at it. The universe has many edges, the edge of transparency, the edge of stars and galaxies, the edge of neutral atoms, and the edge of our cosmic horizon. From the Big Bang itself, we can look as far away as our telescopes can take us, but there will always be a fundamental limit. Even if space itself is infinite, the amount of time that has passed since the hot Big Bang is not. No matter how long we wait, there will always be an edge that we'll never be able to see past. In other words, the universe is big, really big, bigger than the most. We can comprehend. The observable universe extends from the Earth to the horizon of the cosmic microwave background. When the light of the cosmic background was emitted about 13.8 billion years ago, it was only 42 million light years away. But because of the expansion of the universe, that horizon is now more than 46 billion light years away. Using that definition, the known universe is about 93 billion light years in diameter. As large as that is, it's only the portion of the universe we can observe. The total universe extends beyond our horizon. Just how far it goes is an interesting question. There are indications that the universe extends far beyond what we can observe. The universe we see has a fairly uniform distribution of matter. Matter clumps into galaxies, and those galaxies clump into clusters of galaxies. But on a scale larger than about 300 million light years, those clusters appear randomly distributed. In other words, the universe is homogeneous and isotropic. If what we observe were the extent of the universe, then we would be basically in the center. Since we see about the same amount of mass in all directions, the gravitational pull from all that matter would basically cancel out. However, for a galaxy on the edge, it would see a great deal of matter in one direction and basically nothing in other directions. Gravitationally, it would be pulled toward the center of the universe. Because of dark energy, this universe wouldn't collapse upon itself, but it would mean that galaxies would tend to clump toward the center. Since gravity is a curvature of spacetime, this would distort the overall shape of the universe. What we observe, however, is that the universe is flat. At the very least, this means an observer at the edge of our horizon must also see a homogeneous and isotropic universe. Given the flatness limit, that would mean the total universe is at least 400 times larger than the observable universe, 
but it could be much larger. Another point of evidence is the fact that the cosmic microwave background has an almost perfectly uniform temperature. There are small fluctuations of temperature throughout the background, but the overall temperature is the same in all directions. However, it shouldn't be. The cosmic microwave background was emitted when the universe was about 380,000 years old. At best, that means that only regions of space within a radius of 380,000 light years would have any way to reach thermal equilibrium. For anything more distant, there simply wasn't enough time for the regions to communicate, even at the speed of light. When we look at the cosmic background in different directions, we see different regions that couldn't have reached the same temperature. They were simply too far away from each other, and yet, they have the same temperature. The dominant idea to explain this is known as early inflation. Basically, a fraction of a second after the Big Bang, the universe entered a short period of extremely rapid expansion. In a brief moment, the universe expanded by a factor of 10 to the power of 60, before settling down to its current rate of expansion. While we don't have direct evidence of early inflation, it agrees with several observational aspects. According to the inflation model, the observable universe was roughly the size of a quark before early inflation and about the size of a grain of sand afterwards. If the size of the total universe before inflation was the distance light could travel since the Big Bang, then the current universe is about 10 to the power of 27 larger than the observable universe. In other words, comparing the observable universe to the entire universe is like comparing a grain of sand to the observable universe. It could be much larger perhaps even infinite. Of course, all of this assumes the cosmos doesn't have some kind of strange topology. Since space and time can warp and weft, one could imagine a universe that loops around to itself, being finite in volume but infinite in distance. Imagine a cosmic version of the surface of the Earth. It has a finite area, but due to the Earth's curvature, you could travel in a particular direction forever, simply looping around the Earth over and over. In cosmic terms, that would mean a beam of light traveling through space would eventually find itself back where it started. If the universe were closed and smaller than the observable universe, we would expect to see multiple versions of the same galaxies. There have been studies looking for periodic fluctuations in the cosmic microwave background that would indicate such a closed universe effect, and they've found no evidence of such a thing. If the universe is truly closed, then it must be at least 78 billion light-years in diameter. Of course, there is no reason to presume the universe has such a closed topology, so that lower bound should be taken with a grain of salt. So, the short answer for the size of the universe is that it's huge, likely very, very, very huge, possibly infinite. On the other hand, note that the universe is not only vast, but also mysterious, filled with wonders beyond our comprehension. Only 5% of the universe is normal, observable matter. The remaining 95% of the universe is stuff that we can't see and don't yet understand. An extraordinarily vast portion of the cosmos is still unknown, despite the technological advancements of the last century. Even with computers at our fingertips, the worldwide internet, and space-based observatories mapping the far reaches of our universe, there is still so much that we don't understand. Worse, the problems facing our picture of the universe are not limited to what we can perceive. Our minds and the culture in which they were formed condition the way we explore the universe. Because of this conditioning, we have mental blind spots for the cosmic phenomena that run counter to human intuition and understanding. The universe was not built for the human mind to understand. When we look up at the night sky, we see only a tiny fraction of what is out there. It is the task of the astrophysicist to develop a picture of the universe, despite our overwhelming blindness. That's all the information that we have for you today. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes. And be sure to also tell us what you think about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. As always, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.